Coming up next on Making Moves, change is the name of the game at the new JTA. We'll talk with CEO Nat Ford about his bold new vision for the agency. Red light runners have a new enemy, how intersection cameras may help save some lives. JTA makes a giant leap into a greener world and find out why JTA and magnets go together so well. I'm Joyce Morgan Danford, those stories and much more next on Making Moves. Hello everyone and welcome to Making Moves. I'm Joyce Morgan Danford. JTA Chief Executive Officer Nat Ford will be joining me in just a moment. Our top story, the Jacksonville Transportation Authority is undergoing some major organizational changes under the direction of its new CEO. Over a 10 week period, Nat Ford met with both past and present board members, employees, customers, elected officials, JTA vendors, and more to better understand the authority's history and culture. From that, Ford announced the immediate focus of the agency would be the following. Service delivery, internal and external communications, accountability, and financial management. And joining us now is JTA CEO, Nat Ford. Obviously a lot of time and effort has been going into this whole vision of what you're gonna do and how you're going to do it. And uh, kind of walk us through this process of how you're gonna address these things. Well, uh, we, we've been very busy. Uh, and uh, we thought that it was important that we get a, as much feedback as possible uh, so that uh, as we make the changes, looking at the future of the JTA, looking at the transportation needs uh, in the Northeast Florida region, be, making sure that the JTA was prepared for those changes. So uh, with that, I've uh, announced a restructuring of the organization that'll help us uh, improve, at the end of the day, improve our customer service, mm -hmm. uh, focusing on uh, accountability, making sure that what we promise that we're going to do and that we're holding each other accountable, making sure that we, uh, we follow through on what we promise, uh, making sure that our service is, uh, uh, is up to par, world-class customer service for our riders, that they have a vehicle that's on time, that bus comes on time, that it's clean, that it's safe, uh, so uh, uh, we're looking at those activities and then making sure that we're good stewards of, our, uh, of all of the funds that are provided to us by our taxpayers. Now break that down. Let's start mm. with communications first. Yes. Communications is always an issue, whether it be with your internal customers, your external customers. How are you working through that process? Well, uh, this show is a good example of that. Mm -hmm. uh, making sure that we share with our customers uh, how to use our system, some of the challenges that we're facing, and how we're going to address those challenges. Uh, also, and that's on the external side. On the internal side, making sure that all of our employees are well aware of the, the great opportunity we have mm -hmm. to serve the public and that uh, we have one common vision and working together very collaboratively with a spirit of teamwork. Mm -hmm. Accountability. Everybody yes. wants to know about that. That, that that's number one. Right. Well, uh, that's number one. Uh, you know, we had, we have to hold each other accountable. I have to be held accountable in terms of uh, the leadership of this organization, and that goes all the way to our, our bus operators and all the various different disciplines in our organization. That we do things to the best of our ability, and we look for opportunities to be creative po uh, problem solvers. Financial management. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Well, <laughs> yes. you know, I think uh, nowhere, there's no individual in this world uh, with the economy the way that it, it has been in the past few years. Uh, we hope for a better economy, but with the current economy, it is critical that we, every dollar that we spend, every decision that we make, that we have some financial backdrop in making that decision so that we are stretching those dollars and providing as much service as possible to our customers, keeping their fares as low as possible. And uh, I think that's just uh, important in this day and age. 
And you know, uh, another thing that you've been talking about is just kind of streamlining That's JTA. Right. Talk about how you're going about making that happen. I think successful organizations, uh, they're ones that are quick, they make quick decisions, that they're nimble organizations. Technology is changing, uh, lifestyles are changing. So as an organization, we need to be able to communicate very quickly, make quick decisions, solve problems rather quickly, and then be able to uh, uh, implement those changes as quickly as possible. And Mr. Ford, I know you've been building this new leadership team. Mm -hmm. Where are you with that? Well, we have identified uh, six positions, uh, that executive level positions that will be reporting to my office, a chief of staff, and then five vice presidents. And uh, out of those six positions, we've filled five of them. Uh, we have uh, one more position. It will take us a little bit more time, and I expect to have that completed soon. Okay, then a lot of work ahead, and we'll be talking with you a little later about more of it. Okay. So, just how does a training program make JTA greener? Well, with another $4 million grant already in hand, the JTA is awaiting delivery of seven all-new diesel-electric hybrid buses to add to its fleet. The Federal Transit Administration awarded JTA the funds to buy the new vehicles as part of its Tigger grant program. Now, among the many features of these new hybrid buses, a 70% improvement in fuel mileage over standard 40-foot buses. Now, that represents a savings of more than 23000 gallons of fuel each year just on these seven buses alone. Let's bring our chief executive officer back in. 23,000 gallons sounds like a huge savings for just seven buses. Well, you know, you look at the life of those buses, they're going to be with us for about 12 years. So mm -hmm. over the life of those uh, buses, uh, we expect, a, you know, nearly a million dollars in savings. Okay, Mr. Ford, I understand that all seven buses were also ordered with the mini hybrid electric system. We've talked about that before, yes. but just kind of walk us through that again. Well, in addition to the fuel savings, less diesel fuel that we'll be using to move the bus. We also get efficiencies in terms of the air conditioning system and the braking system. So uh, I think it's a great decision to move forward with this new technology. Well, as you heard at the top of the show, Nat Ford has been in overdrive since taking over the CEO job back in December. Mr. Ford has been meeting with elected officials that represent Northeast Florida at the local, state, and federal levels, as well as area business leaders. Jacksonville City Council member Bill Gulliford invited Ford to meet with dozens of his constituents at the public library in Neptune Beach. The group had plenty of questions for this new CEO, including transportation options for seniors at the beaches, green initiatives, and the Mayport Ferry. Well, transportation is a big issue at the beach, I think, presently and in the future. So I liked his total approach when we sat down and talked. And, uh, We've got the ferry, we've got the trolley, we've got the bus service. It wouldn't it be wonderful if we had light rail between here and downtown someday? So, there's a lot of aspects. This summer, Jacksonville will be hosting a National Transportation Conference. The Conference of Minority Transportation Officials, COMTO, and about 400 of its members will converge on our city to discuss transportation issues affecting the nation. Mr. Ford was honored at a kickoff reception for the conference late last month. And the annual Martin Luther King Jr. Breakfast at the Prime Osborne Convention Center gave JTA's new boss the opportunity to meet area civic, business, and church leaders. The breakfast is an annual tradition honoring the life and work of the famous civil rights leader. Back with Nat Ford right now. You know, it's so important as a, a top chief executive officer in this city, to have this opportunity to meet everyone else who's a mover and a shaker, really some key players in this community. Yes, I'm committed to this community. I thought it was very important that uh, as quickly as possible and as frequently as possible that I get out uh, of the office and, and get out there and meet uh, the, you know, the stakeholders of this community, our riders, the business community, uh, the nonprofit leaders, and people in our uh, religious community. So it's been great. Uh, to get around and meet those folks. And you know, it's just important to them to, to see that you're out there. But really and truly, you have been busy. You only have a little bit of time to do this. How are you making it work? How are you fitting it all in? Well, you know, I'm truly committed uh, to the job. And uh, I have, I believe, a committed team of individuals working with me. So they're, uh, you know, we are making sure we're minding the store while I uh, get out there and, and, and build relationships. Okay, so how are you making it all work when it comes to uh, hearing from the stakeholders. What are you hearing out there? Well, it's interesting because we have 
you know, different sectors of the city and different sectors of the community. So it's not a one-size-fits-all arrangement. Uh, I have uh, heard everything from we want more bus service. Uh, are we going to start looking at commuter rail, light rail, or streetcars? Mm -hmm. uh, what's going to happen with uh, uh, the Skyway, uh, the Mayport Ferry, for mm -hmm. example? Mm -hmm. So there's a host of interests across uh, Jacksonville, and uh, the JTA is going to step up to the plate and try and solve all of those issues. It's a it's a big job, yes. and so where do you start? How do you kind of mm -hmm. prioritize these things that you're hearing that need to be done and the things that you know need to be done? Exactly. First, we have to have our own house in order. We need to make sure that uh, we clearly understand uh, what are the needs of our customers. So, you know, a, a great deal of external uh, communication work in terms of identifying their needs. That uh, we're working collaboratively together as a team and that we clearly understand our vision and our mission. Uh, looking at our financial situation, I mean, that's critical. That is the backbone to a lot of what we do. And then looking at our infrastructure. Do we have the right buses? Do we have the right infrastructure tools and equipment to do the work that uh, uh, is required of us? So I'm still doing a lot of fact fact finding, but I think we have a, an idea where we need to go. Now, Mr. Ford, we know you've been out there in the community. We've talked about that, but what about continuing this Nat Ford tour? Oh, well, it, it'll never end. Uh, it's an ongoing process. I think it's important that uh, we reach out regularly and talk to our customers talk to our stakeholders, the business community, those folks who depend on the JTA. So we will continue uh, with our outreach. I will be spending a great deal of time riding our system. Uh, that's the next step. So uh, a great deal of uh, riding the system, face-to-face uh, -face, uh, meetings with our customers and getting it straight from them, uh, how they feel about the JTA and where we could improve our performance. Well, coming up next on Making Moves, authorities look to technology to slow down intersection violators and maybe save some lives. And how JTA offers an affordable transit solution to get some local students needing a ride to school. Those stories and much more when we come back. Imagine taking a gondola ride through the canals in Venice, experiencing the breathtaking magnificence of the Eiffel Tower, or riding a legendary double-decker bus through the streets of London. For most of us, these are just dreams that will never come true, but they could. Think about saving hundreds, even thousands of dollars a year by doing one simple thing, parking your car and taking JTA instead. Save money, ride JTA, and make your dreams a reality. Welcome back to Making Moves. In 2012, the South Side and Bay Meadows intersection had nearly 100 reported crashes. Well, now a new campaign called Respect the Red is aimed at slowing down vehicles and preventing motorists from running red lights. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office has installed two new red light cameras at the intersection. The cameras are just two of 25 slated to be installed throughout the city. Once installed, there will be a 30-day grace period at each site before the JSO will issue any citations. When we get the, the notice of violation from Red Flex, we have a sworn police officer, and that's really important because it's actually somebody who's well versed in traffic uh, you know, um, statutes and, and making sure that, that only the people that need to be cited are actually sent the citations. They can see for six seconds prior to the intersections and six seconds after um, after it leaves the approach to, to verify that the actual violation occurred. Additionally, only when um, people enter the intersection, in, you know, improperly, uh, violating the red light, then a still photograph is taken. Initial tickets will cost the motorist $158. After that, fines will be $274 and three points on your license. Tickets can be appealed. Your best bet, though, slow down and, of course, don't run any red lights. And you can find out more about the Respect the Red campaign and where the red light cameras are going to be installed by the JSO website. Just go to coj.net, click Departments, and then the Sheriff's Office. When the Regional Transportation Commission finalized its efforts in December to proceed with the exploration of a six-county regional transportation plan, it still needed final approval from the participating county's legislative bodies before being sent off to the state legislature for implementation. Well, Duval County, the largest county in the region, was the last to vote. A no vote 
could have thrown the entire regional plan into turmoil. But instead, Jacksonville City Council voted unanimously to approve the plan and continue Northeast Florida on its path to a cohesive, united approach to tackling our transportation issues. Lori Boyer served as a council representative on the commission. I think it shows the council's vision, that the council understood what we could accomplish regionally that we can't accomplish on our own and that there are opportunities for funding, there are opportunities to solve regional problems. It makes us more competitive with the other regions in the state. You know, I think we understood that and, and that's why you saw the unanimous vote. You know, Mr. Ford, that study commission was just wrapping up when you came to JTA. Right. So what are your thoughts and your feelings on regional transportation and, and what that whole study was about? I, I'm 100 percent supportive of it. I think it's, uh, it was a great effort. Uh, it was one of the things that I saw as a highlight to this region, uh, walking in the door as the new CEO of the JTA. Uh, I think our customers do not recognize uh, county lines. Uh, they want to smoothly transfer from one part of our region to the other. And uh, by having a regional approach to this, we're able to give them a seamless uh, commute uh, or seamless transportation uh, for whatever their travels may need. You know, it's interesting that we've spent two years with the study, but now the real work begins right. getting it implemented. Exactly. So at the state level, uh, we are asking our legislators to approve the uh, study results, which is the creation of a commission that will serve for the next five years, uh, providing solutions to our regional transportation uh, concerns. Okay. Thanks so much. Well, the Jacksonville Transportation Authority is a major employer in North Florida, providing hundreds of full and part-time positions. Plus, there is millions of dollars of work each year that is contracted out. And thanks to JTA's highly successful Disadvantaged Business Enterprise or DBE program, small minority firms are also getting a seat at the bidding table. Lawn maintenance is his business. Isidore Robertson is one of about 500 socially and economically disadvantaged vendors certified in JTA's DBE program. Once I got certified, some opportunities opened for me. Other people see me. I knew that I, if getting certified just don't bring you a job, and it was told to me, if we don't just get you a job, you got to go out and find the job. Agencies who receive federal monies from the Department of Transportation are mandated to offer a DBE program. Ken Middleton heads the program at JTA. He says the goal is to level the playing field with a minimum of 12% of the authority's DOT contracts going to DBE certified firms. It puts the prime contractors and the subcontractors in the same room where they can talk and hopefully the, uh, the small contractors can uh, convince the prime contractors that they uh, have a viable business and that they need them in order to be awarded that contract. April Caps reopened a family land management business and admits that being a woman made it difficult. But the DBE certification was her key to success and her goal is to graduate from the program. And they provide training and help me along the way. I've moved from out of my home into my own office and went from five employees to 15 to 20 and growing every day now. Middleton says that every quarter, the agency will spend one and a half to two million dollars with DBE certified contractors. Now to be certified, there is a two-step process. First, you must complete a very detailed application and then there is an on-site review of your business. Typically, certification, uh, if you were to go through another agency, could take up to six months. Uh, here at JTA, once we get that application, if everything goes uh, all right, we should be able to have you certified probably within two or three weeks. But the DBE program is uh, uh, different in that it's a federal program, so certification is good not only locally, uh, it's good statewide, and then it's good across the country. So in other words, you can be certified here in Florida and then go to California and also do business, providing you get certified in the state of California as well. But who can be certified? Here's the criteria. Women, regardless of their race, African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, 
Asian Pacific Americans and subcontinent Asian Americans, and they must own at least 51% of the firm. It's your personal net worth. Uh, you cannot exceed $1.32 million, and that does not include your, your ownership interest in your primary residence or your ownership interest in your business. Uh, gross receipts of the firm uh, over a three-year average cannot be over $22.41 million. Uh, the business must be uh, a for-profit. It cannot be a non-profit business. The criteria makes this a very diverse program with contracts for professional services, paratransit, construction, engineering, janitorial, and lawn care, to name just a few. But certification doesn't guarantee these businesses a contract they still have to bid. We were able to get a lot of work through this downed economy with the big DOT primes, and it has enabled us to stay afloat through this tough economic time. And, and now that we have that exposure, they know the quality of our work. Now that we're in an upswing with this economy, they're now coming to me for larger bids and larger work. For more information on JTA's DBE program, log on to our website at jtafla.com. Well, still to come on Making Moves, JTA continues to play a critical role in the education of thousands of area young people. And it's graduation time. Meet the newest JTA bus operators. Keep it right here. Imagine taking a gondola ride through the canals in Venice, experiencing the breathtaking magnificence of the Eiffel Tower, or riding a legendary double-decker bus through the streets of London. For most of us, these are just dreams that will never come true, but they could. Think about saving hundreds, even thousands of dollars a year by doing one simple thing. Parking your car and taking JTA instead. Save money, ride JTA, and make your dreams a reality. We live in a global community where information can be delivered instantly. But having access to information and getting accurate information don't necessarily go hand in hand. That's where we come in. We are Making Moves, the First Coast's premier source for transportation news. At Making Moves, we strive to deliver timely, reliable, and pertinent information about the transportation stories that affect our community. From transit to roads, we've got it covered. Making Moves, now on Facebook. You're watching the award-winning Making Moves, North Florida's premier source for transportation news and information. Each year, thousands of Duval County parents and students gather for the wildly popular Magnet Mania. It's a chance to get a closer look at the Magnet School opportunities available to students in the district. But getting students to those schools is a factor many parents really haven't even considered. That's why the JTA booth at the Magnet Mania event became such a busy place. Here's Making Moves' Eugene Lindsay with more. Duval County has more than 50 magnet schools offering students a choice of over 30 programs ranging from culinary arts to computer science and even medical professions. But what they don't always offer is transportation to those schools. That leaves parents a choice of their own, forego their kids' dreams of attending a magnet program or find a suitable and affordable transit option. I know a lot of the magnet school programs, they cut out the uh, busing to magnet schools, so you want to know what options you have. We had to find a way for the kids to go to a better school, so we just, um, I was finding out what, uh, what are the routes and uh, how much it costs and, you know, for my daughter to go to one of the middle school. What many parents like Claudia Martinez and Michelle Hill are finding out is what hundreds of other Duval County parents have already learned. JTA can be an excellent option. We stepped up to the plate in 2011 when the school board was really at a fiscal crisis and said, listen, we, we're going to have to counsel some uh, of our magnet school private transportation. David Baldwin has been riding JTA to La Villa School of the Arts for two years now. It's been good. I really uh, like being able to uh, do this and uh, be independent, not have to worry about uh, okay, how am I going to be able to get a ride from someone to go uh, from school to the main library? We don't have to go get him. We don't have to take him. If he needs to stay late, he just stays late and catches the next bus. But the overriding factor for most families is cost, and that's where JTA beats out the private transit companies hands down. 
because when you compare you know, our transit services and the cost versus the private transportation that's available, I mean, you, you, you know, we, we're the best uh, option. <laughs> a month of rides using a private transit company can cost families more than $1,000 a month per child. The cost of a 31-day unlimited ride youth pass with JTA, just $30. It will be cheap, and uh, he told me there's a lot of kids that do that, so it will be safe, because that's mo the more important thing, that she will be safe. And it's convenient. JTA already has bus stops all over the city, and likely there's one right near you. It's close to us. I mean, we had stops and, and, and everything close to our house, too. Currently, youth riders are taking nearly 2,000 trips a day on JTA. In La Villa, Eugene Lindsay, JTA, Making Moves. If you would like more information on JTA's Magnet School Transportation Program, just visit our website at jtafla.com and click on the Magnet School icon right on the home page. If your school is not listed, you can use the handy Trip Planner to check the bus routes nearest you and the school of your choice. Well, time once again for our newest segment here on Making Moves. We call it the last word. Today's last word is graduate. JTA recently graduated 42 new bus operators and shuttle operators. The honorees were welcomed to the authority by CEO Nat Ford and Mass Transit Director Clinton Forbes. Each received a certificate for completing JTA's extensive driver training program. All of the freshly minted operators are now out there on the road driving buses and hopefully taking very good care of the people in just the right way. Well, back with you, Mr. Ford. Now, I know you've been through dozens of yes, bus sir. operator graduations, but this is your first time for JTA. This was probably your first time to meet a lot of the operators. How did yes. it go? Oh, it went fantastic. I enjoy those graduations over uh, my decades of being in this industry. And uh, it gave me an opportunity to share some of my experiences and I think uh, share some, some insights with them. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, uh, they have a very demanding job. Uh, driving a, a bus in an uh, urban environment is a demanding job. I, I also share with them, you know, congratulations on a new career. But most importantly, I think uh, the three most important words to any bus operator, safety, safety, safety. And so uh, with that, uh, we wish them well on their new careers. Okay, safety, safety, safety. That is uppermost in your mind. But also, these guys are really ambassadors when you think about That's it. Right. Because for many, many of our clients, they are the first line. Exactly. In fact, uh, they're ambassadors not just to JTA, but to the entire Jacksonville uh, community. So uh, quite often we have visitors from out of town, and uh, they're the first contact in terms of how people can come and enjoy our fine city. Okay. Thank you so much. And that wraps up this edition of Making Moves. Thanks for joining us today. Now remember, if you missed any part of the show or just want to watch it again, complete episodes of Making Moves are always available on JTAFLA.com and on our YouTube channel, JTA904. And you can also find exclusive web-only content on our Facebook page. So be sure to check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash JTA Making Moves. For Nat Ford and the entire Making Moves team, I'm Joyce Morgan Danford. We'll see you again the next time we're Making Moves. Uh -huh.